going to share the different lathering experiences with using different types of handmade soaps. And I have six different bars that I want to share with you guys. And just fair warning, we have rainwater collection. That's our source of water. And I have noticed more of a creamier lather here versus when we lived in town or just outside of town when we had treated water. So it's still an amazing lathering experience either way. I just noticed it is creamier. So whatever the chemicals and treatments they put in it does create less of a creamy lather, so to speak, but it's still great either way. So the first one I'm gonna show, this is a an actual melt and pour type soap, melt and pour glycerin type soap. This is a mix of the, a goat's milk one and a regular clear one. This it did not have any detergents in it. I do not buy the ones that have detergents. So this is purely soap. The other ones I'm going to be showing, the other five are cold process. So let's go ahead and show this one real quick. It doesn't take much water at all, but we're just gonna, and not much soap, you can already see it bubbling up. So this makes a nice, see those big bubbles? Isn't that nice? So a nice lathering experience. And this, these would work really good for shave soaps as well, because you kind of have, once you lather it up some more, you kind of get a little bit of that creamy lather. Moving on, this is one that we've actually been using as hand soap in our bathroom. And this is my typical bar that I that I create for my cold process. So see we have some nice bubbles there. More open bubbles, not as creamy, but you can see some big bubbles there. Not as creamy as that goat's milk soap, but this is a great bar of soap. And this is my typical recipe that I use for my cold process. And it's got shea butter in it, so it gives that extra little bit of moisture after you rinse your hands off. Now this one, my next one, I did as a test for someone who was wanting to, me to make one more for sensitive skin. And they had said that they had used a um, kind of an old-fashioned lard bar. It still has the, the super fat in it, but this one is one that I actually made quite a few years ago, and this is 95% lard and 5% castor oil. Castor oil is a really great oil to add in because it helps stabilize your lather, your bubbles. Now, lard creates a hard bar of soap, but it's a very creamy lather. So when I do this one, we're not gonna have very big bubbles. Or not as many. So can you see that? So there are some bubbles, but it's really not as, as, as many. And it feels a lot like, see how it's, it's getting really creamy there? It feels a lot like more of a, a lotion-y type soap. And this is from that lard. So lard does make an amazing bar of soap, but it's definitely one that you want to mix in with other oils like the olive oil and coconut oil and different things. Um, but see how it makes a really creamy bar of soap. This one would actually be really great as a shave soap. If you like just a really creamy, lots of, excuse me, not a lot of bubbles, uh, this would be really great for like shaving your legs. So this is, it's still a nice bar, but you're not gonna get bubbles out of this oil combination. All right, next up, I'm going to share what I use for my face soap, because I actually have three different recipes that I do, but this one is what I use. It's an activated charcoal tea tree oil one, more for problematic skin like what I have, and this was like a leftovers batch, so that's why it's in that kind of rough shape, but this one is actually pretty similar to my normal batch, but it doesn't have the shea butter in it. but this will give nice big bubbles. And the activated charcoal does kind of turn the lather a little bit gray, but it doesn't stain anything. So you've got some nice big bubbles in there. This is what you can use this for body as well. But nice lather there. Now 
The next one is one that I created for a shampoo bar. And again, this was an end piece that I used. So when I make soaps, I usually pour, because there's always a little bit of leftover when I do the round ones, I'll pour the leftovers into a separate mold. Now the shampoo soap that, actually I'm gonna do shampoo now and then do the shave bar next. Both of those contain apple cider vinegar and the ingredients are different than what I use in my body soap because for the shampoo, you don't really want those extra free floating oils in your hair for what you want for your body. So that conditioning, you don't really want to weigh down the hair where it's really nice on the skin. So the lather is fairly similar to the regular bar of soap. It does have a lower, again, like a lower super fat. So you don't get as much of that creamy lather. Now, when I do use this in my hair, I get, so there's some big bubbles in there. I do get a really great lather when I'm doing that. Now with this bar, so I said it has similar ingredients, but they're kind of like in the different, in different order, because depending on what you're wanting, you may want say more coconut oil or more um, olive oil or more X, Y, Z. And so this one has, like I said, similar ingredients are just in a different order, different quantities, because I want to take advantage of the qualities of each oil once they're saponified. Now the last one I'm going to share, this is one I created as a shave bar. And I actually, this was one of the first tests that I did for a shampoo bar. And cause I did all this research on the different properties of the oils, wants to become soap and I created it from there and it was it was really funny because it was terrible as a shampoo bar but it was amazing as a shave bar. So the number one oil, the main ingredient in this one is actually avocado oil which I don't use in any other recipe where my main oil in a typical body bar would be olive oil and olive oil is actually one of the least used ones in this one. So it's a really hard bar. The soft oils in it are really at the, the minimum level. But this one has a really great lather. You can see some big bubbles in there, but it also has a creaminess factor in it that's really great. So with these oils, um, there's something that we like to call slip and it's almost, my dad was a potter. So that was something that, that he used too. And it, it creates a silkiness to the bar. So this one actually has, with the oils and the way it's made, it creates a silkier lather. So you can see, you've got a nice, nice bubbles there, but it's really a really silky bar. So this is something that you really want to think about when you're choosing oils for your soaps is, okay, what's the lather going to be? Um, and what's the best for a single purpose oil versus, you know, something that has lots of different oils in it. So that's why, and if, if you're buying soap for personal use and you're not making it, this is why it's really important to get ones that have a lot of different oil options because they complement each other. And a lot of times like that lard one, it still makes a great bar soap, but most of the time when you have single oil soaps, you're not gonna get the best showering experience, so to speak. So kind of like coconut oil. Um, coconut oil is very cleansing. I mean, all soaps cleanse, but that one um, really kind of strips the oils from your, from your skin and you're going to get amazing lather, but you're probably going to get more of a squeaky clean feeling. Olive oil, you can use 100% olive oil in a soap, and that's going to make more of a creamy lather like the lard one. It takes about a year for olive oil soaps to cure correctly. Otherwise, they're just going to dissolve. And it's going to be, like I said, a very gentle, very creamy bar. So I hope you enjoyed watching that, and that kind of gives you an idea of how different recipes lather.